Lamuel A. Stanislaus, a dentist by profession and a UN diplomat by appointment, served twice as Grenada's ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary representative to the United Nations from 1985 to 1990, and again from 1998 to 2004. Between these two appointments, he served as ambassador at large and deputy permanent representative for two years. Born in Petty Martinique, Grenada on April 22, 1921, he was educated at the Grenada Boys Secondary School, 1933 to 1938, and Harvard University, where he received the B.S. Summa Cum Laude in 1948 and the Doctor of Dental Surgery, that's D.D.S., in 1953. He was engaged in the private practice of dentistry in New York City for 32 years before going to the United Nations in 1985. There, he became a seasoned, substantive, and eloquent voice on behalf of his country, Grenada Caricun Pidi Martinique. On occasion, he was also delegated to speak on behalf of the Caribbean community of CARICOM and the group of Latin America and Caribbean countries, GRULAG. The diplomat served for a year as a vice president of the UN General Assembly, during which time he was appointed to act for a month in the absence of the president of the General Assembly, receiving the highest commendation for the conduct of the business of the General Assembly for that month. Another highlight of his tenure was the persuasive statement he made before the Decolonization Committee, which resulted in the invitation of the then Chief Minister of Montserrat to come to the UN to plead his case for additional help for his volcanic ravaged island. One of Lamuel Stanislaus's legacies to his country and to the 11 other small Commonwealth countries at the United Nations is what's known as the Small States Joint Office of the UN, where the larger Commonwealth states gave the smaller states well-appointed shared office space rent-free for the past 26 years and counting. In commenting on the pioneering effort and the persuasive skills of the ambassador from Grenada, which made the joint office possible, the New York Times recently referred to this unique arrangement as the United States of Tiny. Dr. Lamuel Stanislaus was the recipient of numerous professional, civic, and political awards, including, but not limited, to the insignia of commander of the British Empire from Her Majesty the Queen of England, CBE, the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office, the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters from St. George's University, and the most distinguished service award from the Brooklyn Historical Society. On February 7, 2016, Dr. Stanislaus was recognized under Grenada's National Heroes legislation and was given the prestigious designation Knight Commander, which entitles him to be referred to as Sir Lamuel, KCMG. So Lamuel Stanislaus's life demonstrated a love of God, humankind, love of country, love of Grenada and its peoples, as well as the Caribbean community at large, and an insatiable commitment to public service. He passed on September 18, 2016, at the age of 95. You know, Dr. Stanislaus, you will agree, was a man of sartorial eloquence. Yes, yes. Agree? Yes. All right. There's another gentleman who is also well known for his sartorial eloquence because he has graced it on us on many occasions. Former borough president. He's a Trini, a Grenadian, a Bajan, a Jamaican, a Haitian, a Guyanese. Dr. Marty Markowitz to say a few words. Thank you so much. I'm a, I am not a phony politician. I'm a trinity through and through. Anyway, thank you all very, very much. Uh, first off, uh, when I think of Ambassador Dr. Lambert Stanislaus, once in a lifetime, if you're blessed Roy Hassock and Jim Connolly, you meet a man like Dr. Stanislaus. If you're lucky, once in a lifetime. And he's the kind of person that will always be, whenever you met him, will always be with you, even though he may not be here physically now, somehow you just know his presence. Because he can't not make an impression on you. It's impossible. 
a positive, loving impression. Cool and smooth. Nice and easy. No one had a better command of the English language and knew how to deliver it with the proper pausing facial expressions, emphasis. Nobody in my lifetime that I have ever met like Dr. Stanislaus. And by the way, while he and I never wrote love notes to each other, <laughs> unlike North Korea Kim's and the orange man that sits temporarily in the White House, the love affair between Dr. Stanislaus and his family and all of us were real and were true. During the challenging days of the 70s and 80s, he was the voice and the face of the Caribbean. Whenever any elected official sought guidance and direction, policies, impacts on the committed American community, every person found their footsteps towards Dr. Lemuel Stanislaus. He made it clear that people of color, African American, Caribbean Americans, were indeed one people. He made sure that on every issue facing the city and state and beyond, that the needs of Caribbean Americans were heard loud and clear. He truly was a very special, special person. Today, it's my hope, and you co-name this beautiful street, that folks, young folks in particular, might say, why is that name up there? Who is Dr. Stanislaus? In a day as we face today where there aren't as many role models do I have to, as we wish we had, in almost every profession, it seems every day, someone else is disappointing us. Someone else that we couldn't believe that they're capable of doing it. We never had to worry about Dr. Stanislaus. He was one very special person. Thank you, Lord. Dr. Stanislaus, as I said at your funeral, homecoming, shalom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Markowitz. I'd now like to call on a gentleman who is a, a, a rock in the community, a man who has championed the causes of the development of small business in these parts, and proud to say is a Grenadian of the Caribbean American Chamber of Industry and Commerce. I can bring the mic, you know, if you don't mind. No, yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Roy Hastick. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I decided to walk to the podium because when I see Beryl, I call her Beryl because she is the matriarch of the family. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. When I see her sitting in the sun so long, and I'm, I think I'm much younger than her, and I'm walking with my cane and two escorts, distinguished escorts, I feel sad that I should be doing much better. But God is good. For those of you who have not seen me in a while, I've had a stroke in many years ago and I'm rebounding, thank God. This is my 11th year and I just had a setback a few months ago, but I'm feeling much better. The good news. Today is a historic day, as many um, people mentioned this morning. But it's a historic day for the Stanislaus' family. What a family, a distinguished family of people of distinction. This morning we had four of his grandsons and an uncle come into our house. And my wife, I overheard her mention that, oh, it's four boys. And when I look on the steps, 
and I see the looks. They look like Merrick Beryl and Dr. Stanislaus. I know that there are many, many more. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to them, to Dr. Eugene and the other brother and sister who have met and seen walking down the block that's on the bicycle. I said you have a, I'm saying that you have a hard road and big shoes to fit. Dr. Stanislaus was a legend. He was a father, a grandfather, a mentor to many of us who are here today. That's why some of us are here. He was a role model, as Marty Markowitz mentioned, to many of us, those of us who worked with him in the halls of the United Nations. You would know Joe Addict, that he always tell us that proper planning. Eugene, I'm, I'm plagiarizing another quote from him. The five Ps, proper planning prevents Pull for pumps. And that stuck with me as I drove with him to the UN many times. And I listened to him, and he was very, very cautious and diplomatic with his words, always trying to heal the wounds, bringing people together bringing our diverse community together. Many people who have not talked together for many years. He sat down, mediated, negotiated, and sometimes it was successful or unsuccessful, but he was the type of person that was the statesman. And I noticed Eugene, you were quoted in the newspaper yesterday, Kings County Politics, and you mentioned that he was a statesman. So I'm plagiarizing your word this morning. But he was a statesman. Gentlemen, he was a statesman. So as we celebrate today during this Caribbean American Heritage Month, celebrating 40 years of accomplishments of Caribbean Americans who have paved the way for many of us to make it in this country. When I came to this country from St. Davis and Grenada, not directly, but I was told that you have to meet Dr. Stanislaus. And I think he was going, I think Barrow bear with me, but I remembered he was either going to St. Matthew's Church in the early 50s, 30s, 40s, and then he moved to St. Ignatius, I think. But we had to go to meet him, and then we had to learn the lay of the land, how to stay safe, who to talk to, who not to talk to, and stay out of jail. I thank him for that. I thank him. So to the family of Dr. Lamin Stanislaus, to Dr. Matthew Jean. Matthew Jean is a distinguished individual, first Haitian born council member in the city of New York, in this great city. To Mr. Derek Vento, who collaborated with the team on making this possible. And to the family and friends, we could only say thank you for your thought, for your vision, and your implementation 
to make this historic area continue to be a historic area. And I know Marty Markowitz, you're not the bar president now, but I know you have a lot of influence. You make sure that it continues to make sure that the surrounding uh, Madam President of Lefferts Man Association giving you a charge to make sure that this neighborhood remains historic to continue the legacy of His, Ex His Excellency Dr. Lamiel Stanislaus. Thank you all very much. God bless. Thank you once again, Dr. Roy Hastick. Our dear Congresswoman Yvette Clark of the 9th Congressional District, which includes us here, East Flatbush, Midwood, Crown Heights. She's not here today, but she has graciously sent a representative in Anita Taylor, the District Director, to say a few words. Ms. Taylor, thank you. To Bishop Wiley, the Congress member at UG, to the Dr. Hastings, to George High Raddicks, to Derek Ventour, to the Stanislaus family, former borough president, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Anita Taylor, and I am the district director of Congress of Money Far. Unfortunately, she could not be here today. However, she wanted us to submit a House of Representatives congressional record in the House of Representatives, and would like to present this to the family. It read as follow. I am Congresswoman Van Clark. I am proud to present, represent New York 9th Congressional District. It is indeed an honor to raise in tribute to the life and legacy of the late Dr. Manuel A. Stanislaus. Dr. Stanislaus was born in the beautiful island nation of Grenada, Karikuma, and Petit Mani, Martinique and came to the United States in 1945, where he received his Bachelor in Science and Doctor of Dental Surgery degrees from Howard University. Dr. Stanislaw practiced dentistry in upstate New York briefly before moving his practice to the Brooklyn Heights, where he served the Brooklyn Heights community for 32 years. In 1985, Mr. Stanislaus was appointed permanent representative of Grenada, Caricom, and Petika Mantini to the United Nations for the five years and serve as ambassador at large and deputy permanent representative for two years. He was later reappointed as the permanent representative of the Spice Island to the United Nations until 2004. There he became a seasoned, substantive, and most eloquent voice on behalf of his birthplace, Grenada, Caricom, and Petit Mountain. On occasion, he has also delegated to speak on behalf of the Caribbean community, Caricom, and the group of Latin America and the Caribbean countries Gulag. To add to his tremendous achievement, Dr. Stanislaw was also an activist in this community. As a visionary leader, Dr. Stanislaw was a founder member of the West Indian American Day Carnival Association, a national day of celebration for Caribbean traditional tradition and culture. Brooklynites continue to partake in celebrating our beautiful heritage. Dr. Stanislaw was well-versed in the rich history of the Caribbean. He was a father of the Caribbean political empowerment in central Brooklyn, and which I was a beneficiary. 
It goes without saying that the standards law commitment to public service represent leadership, scholarship, integrity, and inspiration to the members of our Brooklyn community. Likewise, to this beloved, likewise to his beloved birthplace of Grenada, Caricom, and Petit Martin, Dr. Lamuel A. Stanislaw was a recipient of numerous professional civic and political awards. It is distinct honor to announce that on Saturday, June 15, 2019, Rockland Road between Flatbush and Bedford in Brooklyn, New York, has been designated by Councilmember Matthew Eugene and the New York City after his namesake, the Dr. Lamuel A. Stanley's Law Way. Sir Lamuel A. Stanley's Law Life demonstrate a love of God, humankind, love of country, love of birthplace, and its love of people, as well as the Caribbean community at large, that the standard law was and will remain an inspiration to all. Thank you very much, and to the gentlemen out here, a happy Father's Day. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. I'd just like to recognize the presence, I can't remember if it was done yet, of Mr. Aiden Pursu, who is of the Grenada Consulate, and he's here with us. And I'm hearing great things about you, Mr. Pursu. That's why Mr. Ralph Lewis is standing next to you. <laughs> We'd like to call now on Judge uh, Sylvia Hines Raddix to say a few words. To Councilman Eugene Matthew, and to uh, Representative for Congress Member Yvette Clark, to Dr. Hastick and Mrs. Hastick, and to particularly the Stanislaus family, and to the matriarch at Daryl Stanislaus. And I am here, good, good morning or good afternoon, I don't know what time it is now, it's probably noon, um, to all of you. And I am here just to say some words about Uncle Lamb, but also, I am to speak on the behalf of Aunt Judith, um, who's 103, but who's the older sister of Uncle Len. Aunt Judith decided she wasn't going to speak, but she was going to make me speak on her behalf. This is a momentous occasion. Not only because we're here gathered in this beautiful weather, but we're here to celebrate an individual who was a community builder. If there was one word that I could use to describe Uncle Lamb, it would be humility. A man who walked in God's graces, who every day understand the work that he had to do in the community, who was not just a person who was a doctor, but he was a public servant. He did public service all the time. And we know as people who work every day in public service, that families have to give up a lot in order to have their family members go out and do the work in the community. So I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to Aunt Daryl and all the members of the Sanisol family who sat by and supported Uncle Lamb as he did his work. He has left a legacy. And when I think of him, I say, let the work I did speak for me. So I hope that we don't just look at a name on the corner of a street, but we understand the work that this man did and that we are willing to carry on in that vein and continue his work in community building. May God bless all of you. Thank you very much, Judge uh, Sylvia Hines Reddick. Just like to quickly acknowledge that uh, we have Dee Bernadette Nichols running for the Civil Court Judge in Kings County. Give her a round of applause. And also Edward King also running for the Civil Court Judge. Also give him a round of applause. Where is he? Oy, oy, oy. 
Caroline Cohen, Democrat for Civil Court Judge. Round of applause. And we understand that the president of the West Indian American Day Carnival Association, Angela C., is also here. A round of applause, Angela. Oh, the chairperson. The chairperson. Oh, there she goes. Angela. All right. You know your name in a lot of columns, so, eh? Okay, we'd like now to call a member of... Jean Joseph, the president of the West Indian American Day Carnival Association. Woman power. Yeah. yeah. No matter what some people we know in the White House think about us. All right, we're going to call on the member and family to do the counting of the counting backwards and to uh, pull the rope to unveil the sign. Yeah, no, I'm just going to try and... Let's go, let's go, let's go. We have a job to do as a gentleman. That's what it is. His son, who was also a teacher in his father's footsteps, a devout Catholic, came because of the father, came here, so that the other friends were coming. And that's where the whole thing came. And Uncle Lamb, who is still here, went to Harvard University, got his profession, and came back as a dentist. And not only to see, to keep the conservative community in his dentistry, but to which he was held up a number of times before he moved to Williamsburg, Vancouver. This man has given his life, shared his life with his family, and his five children, who are all professionals, and the rest of the Caribbean community. The, the American Caribbean Center is one of these developments. The University of St. George's, he is also one of the founding fathers of it. There are millions of people whose lives are better because of Dr. Lambert. Yes. Thank you. My name is Walter tonight, and that's my great. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Okay, appreciate it. And God bless. Now, this is uh, the mo moment that we are all waiting for. As the duly elected member of the city council, I, Matthew G, council member of the 48th district, am pleased and honored to present the sign to the family of the doctor Damian Stanislas and the sign reads Dr. Damian Stanislas Way. Yeah! 